Welcome everybody back to The Way, a Rudis Wrestling po- Podcast with your host Matt Durland and wrestling legend Kerry Colat. After a brief hiatus after wrestling season, um, when we talked about Book the Switch, Kerry and I are jumping in today to talk about uh, a book called Make Your Bed, uh, Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe Change the World. And this book is uh, by the author, Admiral William McRaven. Originally, this this was a speech that was given to the graduating class of the University of Texas in 2014, and it focused on 10 principles that General McRaven learned through his military service um, with the Navy, of, of which during his tenure, 37-year tenure of military service, he actually oversaw all the special forces. So the book you know, kind of summarizes the general principles and simple things, simple things that he learned that he carried throughout his military career and throughout life. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's a short read. The chapters are, are fairly, fairly short. If you want to pick it up at, you know, um, Barnes & Noble or order online or wh- whatever bookstore you get your books from, this is a very simple read. Typically, the chapters take about anywhere from five to 15 minutes um, to read, and they kind of build on each other. So it's it's a fun read, it's an easy read, but there's a lot of you know simple principles that can be applied not only to wrestling, to coaching, leadership, life, w- you name it. I think there's a lot of fundamental things and fundamental takeaways that are gonna be really enjoyable to discuss between me and Carrie. We had a lot of fun jumping into it today. But before we get into that, I did want to uh, touch on one thing. Um, here at Rudis, we got some exciting news. Yesterday, we uh, released our officially licensed Rocky apparel um, featuring the likes of Rocky Balboa, Apollo Creed, Clubber Lang, Ivan Drago, Mickey Goldmill, um, all, all the characters from this franchise that we've drawn inspiration from you know, as wrestlers and competitors in life, um, we're proud and excited to launch um, the Rocky apparel gear. And again, this features a lot of the seminal moments from the the Rocky fr- franchise. Um, we're talking, we're talking T-shirts, we're talking sweatshirts, fight shorts, you name it. We've kind of got a pretty broad-based apparel offering. So, if you want to check that out, you can jump on uh, to therudis.com and get your officially licensed Rocky gear. And I guess after one day of sales, I would say if you want them, jump on there quick because they're they're flying off the shelves pretty fast. And um, hopefully we can get, get, it, get it out there and get, get it going for you for Memorial Day. So without further ado, we'll jump right into the po- podcast again. Enjoy this episode. This is Make Your Bed, a, a book by Admiral William McRaven. And it talks about little things that can change your life and maybe change the world. Enjoy. Okay. Hey, Carrie, how's it going? Um, excited to jump back in here. It's been been a little while since wrestling season and, and the end of Switch, but uh, no, it's been a couple of weeks, kind of trying to lock in what we're gonna what we're gonna be talking about here on the next next segment of the way, and uh, we've decided to. Uh, jump into a book called make your bed by uh admiral william mcraven yeah um yeah quick quick little book not not too difficult of a read matt um i like these kind of books you know they're you know it's not too many pages and it, it gets right to the the hard things and in, in terms of helping you run a program or or be successful in whatever it is you happen to be doing and and um for this guy i mean i think he said his career was what 37 years in the navy is what he was yep. in and, and i think he yeah, 37, and I think he said he spent, I don't know, over 30 years leading Navy SEALs and and at one point was um, in charge of uh, um, JSOC in terms of the, the special operations that, that happened and, uh, you know, was leading and commander of that at a point. And, and obviously, I think probably some people, if you go on YouTube, you obviously see him pop up quite a bit in his um, commencement speech at, at, you know, was it Texas, Austin, Texas? I forget, Texas Tech? Yeah, so the the genesis of the book actually arose in uh, 2014. Um, General McRaven was a graduate of the University of Texas, and so they they asked him to come in and give a commencement speech. So 
the speech went viral after he did it. He basically summarized his entire military career and everything that he learned in 10 simple points. And it got so much traction that they actually turned this, the commencement speech into a, into a book. And it's a nice, simple read. And, you know, a lot of the points, you know, a lot of it, you know, for me, it's the simplicity of things that are so meaningful sometimes. I think a lot of times when we're we're looking for answers or we're looking to grow as coaches or leaders or whatever we're doing, we, we think that there's some secret, right? And you know, the, the beauty of this book is like it's the simplest things that that are the most meaningful that can actually, you know, really grow and, and lead people in different ways. And so it's not really a, a, a magic formula or a magic solution. It's just basic things that, that applied day after day, you know, help build out greatness over a long period of time. Yeah. Well, you know, just go back to switch, right. And, and you go back to um, the guy when he went over to Vietnam to figure out the, the, the health crisis that was happening with children over there. And, you know, originally they said it was going to be billions of dollars. And then he followed the bright spots as we had in that book. And it was a very simple formula. Find a mom who's feeding her kids successfully and duplicate what she's doing. And that's exactly where this book kind of comes in. And it's things we've always said. People overcomplicate things. Um, they're always looking for the next best thing. Not that we shouldn't be trying to, you know, uh, reevaluate our training or reevaluate how you run a program constantly you know trying to change it up but sometimes we can overcomplicate things because we see some 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 program doing this or some athlete doing this and in the end you got to come back what works for you what works for your program how, you know where are you having success and how do you continue to duplicate that and how can you keep redefining it to make it sharper and better and that's really what this thing is about it's 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 all the things we always kind of know um written down in a different, different way. And, um, it's simple. Yeah. That's, I mean, that just segues right into the, the first chapter and, you know, the title of the first chapter is like, start your day with the task completed. And it's, and it yeah. really focuses on the title of the book, but the way to start your day, sometimes just the simplest thing, you know, getting your day started with a positive frame of reference that you're doing something productive right from the get go. As soon as you get out of, out of bed, you know, you make your bed and not just, you don't just make your bed. And obviously in, in, you know, this book, it relates to the military and the military precision, precision and how critical the creases in the bed, you know, the creases in your uniform, the attention, the, the attention to small details. And I think that's, that's really what it's not, what it's about in life and in wrestling, it's it's not the major moves. It's the specific things and how you apply the, the most basic things in the most pressure packed situations. And right. you know, in, re, in relation to this, it's like, hey, what what's the mentality you're approaching every day with? You know, what are you trying to ease into your day? Are you trying to collect your thoughts? Are you trying to decide what you're going to do? That, you know, this simple thing about getting getting out of bed and making your bed and making it with a with the intention to do it perfectly, to do it right, you know, is the way to really jumpstart your day with the right mentality. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I, when I read that, um, like all of us, it's human psychology, right? When we, we always, you know, it, it, one of the worst things to do and what you teach your kids as young is to get up in the morning and, and, and exercise first, right? A lot of people get up before they go to work and they get their run in or they get their 45 minutes in, right? And you, you, you just naturally feel better. We all know that it's an endorphin release and it's, it's just a psychological release. You feel like you're being productive and you got your day going and you did the hard work first and you started it. And, um, you know, as an athlete, that is, you know, that is how you have to start your day to be a highly successful athlete in the sport of wrestling or anything you do. You start with something that psychologically psychologically is going to make you feel better about yourself. It's going to make you feel like, OK, I'm out working my, my competition right now. I'm getting better at my at my my task and my sport. And as a coach, um, it's really the same thing when you wake up in the morning, you know, you, you start your task or as a parent, you start your task. What am I going to do for my, my kids or my wife? And what am I going to do for my, my team? And, you know, for a program, the biggest thing is, is communication and keeping your guys on point in season and out of season, you know, and, and for us now we're in this out of season phase. For me, the big thing is, you know, starting my day is communicating with my guys. Like, 
uh, we're just because we're out of season, we're not off point. Like, you know, where are we going? What direction? And it might be as simple as just calling somebody. You know, I don't know how many people I, you know, I, I tell my assistants every now and then, and they do it on their own. I, I've got good, a good staff. Um, but make sure you're picking up the phone and just talking to a guy, even outside of wrestling, because in the end, you're always trying to, you know, build trust with an athlete. And if you focus everything when they're at the college program on their academics and wrestling and nothing on their personal life, then they don't they don't feel like there's an attachment, you know, and that that is a simple task. It's not hard. Um, and it's easy to pick up a phone and, and these kids all, you know, nowadays always have a cell phone on them. And even if I'm a high school coach or something, it's still the same thing to pick up a guy and say, Hey, just how's, what, what are you doing? What's going on? You know, it, it is one of those things you can check the boxes to help keep your guys going and your program going in the right direction. And, you know, it might be something else too. I mean, obviously we, we go in and we do the work and we do the, the extra time with the guys and, um, you know, coach, I'm coming in at 9am. Can you come in with me? Those are all things that we do, but make sure those those little details don't fall through the cracks. And, you know, you could literally write down 10 things, Matt, right? 10 things that you could do as a, as a, as a coach um, to start your day that are simple things that, you know, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a text message, um, you know, that, that, that could get you going, whether if it's college, whether it's a recruiting call or recruiting text, you know? Yeah. And it's just, and it's the way that you're trying to communicate. And that's, that's the thing that, that, that I liked that was pulled out in this first chapter was, you know, when they did, when he got up and, and made his bed every morning, he was like, look, I wasn't going to get a pat on the back. You know, when I, when I went through inspection every morning, like I wasn't going to get a pat on the back or, or get a job well done. This was the expectation, you know? So it's not just, you know, when you get up and you start your day, it's not just doing the work, but it's, it's the way you're doing it. Right. And the attention and the discipline to detail. And when you're locked in on those little things, because every, every, everybody's, seemingly doing the big things right all the time. You know, they're, they are, they're, they are getting up and, and working out. They are, you know, lifting weights or going for a run or getting a drill in, but what's the intentionality behind, behind that effort, right? It's not just, not just doing the work, but, but doing it right and setting a level of accountability for yourself, even in the most mundane things. And, you know, we, we hear about those things, like it's not, it's not what you're doing when the people are watching. It's what you're doing and how you're doing it when nobody's around that's really going to set the standard for yourself and set the standard for your program or your team or your, your, your kids' daily life. And, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of parallels. And I think any book that we, we jump into, I think this is one of the, the simplest things that's the most overlooked is the attention to detail and how specifically you have to get locked in and how important those things are. It's not just, you know, how you shoot your single leg, but it's your head position, it's your hand position, it's, just, it's your shoulder and chest position, right? Um, that a lot of times, you know, if given their own devices, you know, guys guys will cut corners here and there and they, they won't, you know, attend to the pr precise detail that it's going to take when it really matters most. Right. And I think that's the beauty in this simple preparation is conditioning yourself <clears throat> over an extended period of time <clears throat> to doing the most basic things better than everybody else. And when you can condition yourself on the little things, all, all of a sudden the big ticket items, all they seemingly fall into place most of the time. Yeah. Well, you, um, you know, the chapters are small. Uh, the book again is make your bed. Um, the chapters are small. And so what you'll probably get out of each one, they say there might be one sentence that, that stands out to you. Right. And that's the key point. And you just said it when you, you went back, which is something I think parents are dealing with. Um, I know teachers are dealing with, um, coaches and, and college coaches are dealing with, but you said, um, you know, you, you make your bed. It's, it, it's what's expected, right? You know, the big thing you get in, in college, and, and I get it, you know, uh, the financial part of, of wrestling in college for everybody, not everybody gets a scholarship. It's just, I mean, look, they just did a thing the other day where wrestling is the hardest sport to get a scholarship in based on the number of programs and amount of money we have for a athletic dollars. And, um, you know, you get this one from people all the time. Well, what if he starts? Well, that's what you're you're expected to do, right? <laughs> you're, you're supposed to start. That's what you came to do. What he... You know, that's not an achievement, you know, that is, that's what's expected of you, you know, and, 
in uh, if you're a parent out there, you know, as your kids get older, you know, I, I, I have two teenage daughters, you know, and we'll, we'll get in our, our spat sometimes. And, and, you know, one of the things they'll come back with, well, I get A's. That's what you expected to do. You know, <laughs> not that I'm not appreciating that you're doing well in school, but you can't throw an A in my face when you do something that's not smart and, and, and you get in a little trouble over it and then you want to throw that. It's, it's, you don't do it. It's what, it's an expectation, right? And, and that's where you want to be. And you have to be self-driven to realize that. And, you know, I, we all know it and I hate hearing it. Every generation says this generation's worse than the last generation. Look, there's definitely different, different, um, changes now the one thing i tell people is as coaches and parents now and 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 everything nobody had to deal with the internet like the internet has changed it's definitely played a part in how people think how they communicate what what is cool what is not cool you know how outspoken they are it's it's definitely changed and so uh you you have to adjust with it not that you're 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 letting your your morals and your ethics go you have to adjust right we're just in a different time period than every any generation's been with the amount of information that's out there um but i like that because that goes back to the root of really successful coaches really successful athletes um there are certain things that you don't expect to get patted on the back for and you don't yeah, you, you don't get patted on the back for starting you 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 get patted on the back when you're out there and the way you compete and the way you train and and it, all that motivates your teammates. That's that's when you start getting patted on the back, you know. And and um, you know that's just the way it is. But yeah, you don't you don't get scholarship dollars for starting. That doesn't happen. No, and I'm just gonna I'll, I'll piggyback on that. And I mean, you know, I I used to hear that all the time. I would have guys come into my office. You know, they would talk about scholarship or or this and that, whatever whatever the you know the conversation was. But a lot of it when they were looking for an ask or looking for a compliment, they would all, they would always state those obvious things. Well, coach, I work so hard. You know, I live the right lifestyle. You know, I'm, I'm making all the right choices. I'm like, that's the expectation of everybody on this team. You know, so, you know, I appreciate what you're doing and I appreciate, appreciate your level of buy-in, but that's the expectation of everybody in this program. And and so what are you going to do since everybody is doing this same thing? What are you going to do really to differentiate yourself? Because really everybody is working hard. Everybody is yeah. living the right lifestyle for the most part. And I think, you know, to your point about the internet, what it actually does, I think in my mind, <clears throat> when you're leading, you know, as a coach or, or, or in business is it forces you to be more accountable about the message you're sending because there's so much information out there for kids to sift through good and bad, Right. But good in, yeah. in the good way, they're they're much more informed, you know, about <clears throat> technique, training principles, you know, recovery principles, different weight management techniques, this and that. So it almost, in one sense, as a coach and as a leader, it forces you to really be dialed in to the message you're sending and how you're sending it. But also, you know, there's a lot of distractions out there, and I think that's. You know, there's always distractions in life, but even even more so in this te- day and age of technology and social media. You know, there's so many things, you know, that can detract you and distract you from the overall objective. So I think as a coach, yeah. it's your it's your job to okay, hey, I can't eliminate those things. I can't tell you not to do these things, but you know, be dialed in and be disciplined about what's actually beneficial for you. You know, is what you're reading on social media, is what you're posting, is are those little things really going to be beneficial to the end game that you're trying to achieve? You know, and if it's not, if it's if it's a it's a if it's a distraction or a detractor, or if it takes away from your primary focus, that's one of those things that you have to remind your guys that as a coach, I'm like, hey, is this really beneficial? Is this really doing something meaningful for you? to help you reach the, reach the goal that you're trying to achieve individually and collectively as a team. Um, so I think it actually, you know, I, you, we, even as coaches, you know, the amount of information that's out there, we can, we can let it distract us. Right. Or we can, we can yeah. build in an excuse for certain things about the distractions that kids have and say, well, it's the internet or it's the social media. And this is why I'm not able to connect with my guys. I'm like, no, that's your job 
to dial your dial your purpose in even more, you know, when when you're teaching right. these guys. I always always like that phrase. I mean, I'm sure you heard it in in this goes back to the root of success. I keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> I mean, did you ever hear that growing up, right? And oh, I mean yeah. that really is. And that's you you can just get lost in this this wave of information and all these different training methods and this guy's doing this, you know, and um but you know, you can't go wrong. You remember the, the old rules and I, I'm back to uh putting this in with with my guys especially where where you walk in the in the wrestling room and the first thing you have to do is 50 squats, 50 sit-ups, 50 pull-ups and 50 push-ups. Right? You can't go wrong with having that routine where that's what you do. That's just the rule of the practice room and when you walk in and you do that and you know after, you know, 365 days the old drips in the bucket saying and that there's going to be gains and and that's a very simple complex, I mean not complex, very simple task that somebody can do with a, a complex kind of calisthenic program there. And, you know, your team's going to be stronger because there's going to be a lot of gains And it. You know, they get to the point where they're conditioned that they can bang that stuff out. And those 50 extra pull-ups over the course of the season is going to be a tremendous difference when you're on a leg and pulling it in and it didn't take all this fancy stuff. And, and that's what he gets back to make your bed, start your day with the task. That's how you start something. When you walk into the wrestling room, this is how we start. Then after you complete that, then you can go, my guys love to play games, man. They, they got these balls and they're always playing these, these silly games they make up, but they love it. Um, and it's good for them, but that's one thing they have to do. And then they can play the game. And then eventually, you know, I'll walk in and we start the warm up and practice gets going. Um, but those are simple things. Like, so I always go back to that saying I always heard when I was young, keep it simple, stupid, you know, and that's really why Navy SEALs are successful. That's why this guy probably had a career of 37 years, which is impressive. Um, you know, and, and things were simple in, in, in terms of being task oriented and staying on point. Yeah. And I mean, for, for a guy for with 37 years in the military, he actually ran, uh, Admiral, uh, McRaven actually ran all of, all of the special forces, right? He wasn't just in charge yeah. of just the seals. He was in charge of all the special for, forces for the military. And, you know, for him, you know, after 37 years, when he had to make a choice about, you know, making an impactful speech, he started it with the most simple thing. If you want to change the world, which is a, it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty significant statement that he said that. But he's got the, the body of knowledge and the reference points to actually make that statement. If you want to change the, the, the world, start by doing the simple things. Start by making your bed. And, you know, again, I think that's one of the simplest things that we have to remind ourselves as leaders and coaches and parents or, you know, whatever our vocation is, is like pay attention to the small things and they'll never steer you wrong. If you're if you're dialed into the small things and taking care of the small t details, normally the, the big things take care of themselves. Right, right. Well, just, you know, kind of finish up here. Um, you know, that's what I say. If you're a coach listening to this, any program, it doesn't matter, Little League through high school or, or, or college. I mean, make a list of, you know, 10 things that are priority to you as your, your program. You know, simple things, simple things that you know that you can implement and you can stay on point with and make sure they're they're always in front of your, your guys. They're always communicated to your guys um, and that they can can follow along easily with, you know, like I said, whether it's just walking to the room and they have calisthenic program that they do, whether it's what the, something they do after practice to something they do after every single dual meet, you know, after a dual meet, finding that extra conditioning where it's another six minutes that way we're, we're finding conditioning in a competition. You know, I think a lot of people forget that, that you're always training. You're always trying to get better, you know, and, and when you're only competing in one duel and, and you come off and you're already tired, you you know, because we all know you exert a different amount of energy when the lights are on and the singlet's on and it's a different, it's a different feel. And, and then that's when you're, you're at your, your weakest point in another six to eight minutes of how much stronger can I get? And then sit down and cheer on your teammates and sit in the chairs and, and, and help get the victory through that that duel. Um, you know, obviously, of course, if it's something like a triangle duel or something, but those are simple things. I'd make a guide and, and stick with them, you know, and if you don't feel like something's working, throw something out, put something new in there to replace it. But Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to jump back in, in here and dive into another book. And uh, again, this is, you know, the book that, that Carrie and I are, are reading and uh, doing the podcast is, called Make Your Bed, Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe Change the World by Admiral William McRaven. 
So I think this is going to be fun, Carrie. I enjoyed this segment. Um, looking forward to jumping in, you know, the beginning of next week and, and digging in deeper in this book. And I think this is going to be a, a, a lot of fun things to discuss here over the next couple of weeks. All right, Matt. Sounds good, man. Well, good talking to you and, and I'll talk to you next week.